Saturday, July 11th, 1942. Dearest Kitty, Father, Mother, and Margo still can't get used to the chiming of the Western Turn clock, which tells us the time every quarter of an hour. Not me. I liked it from the start. It sounds so reassuring, especially at night. You no doubt want to hear what I think of being in hiding. Well, all I can say is that I don't really know yet. I don't think I'll ever feel at home in this house, but that doesn't mean I hate it. It's more like being on vacation in some strange pension. Kind of an odd way to look at life and hiding, but that's how things are. The annex is an ideal place to hide in. It may be damp and lopsided, but there's probably not a more comfortable hiding place in all of Amsterdam. No, in all of Holland. Up to now, our bedroom with its blank walls was very bare. Thanks to Father, who brought my entire postcard and movie star collection here beforehand, and to a brush and a pot of glue, I was able to plaster the walls with pictures. It looks much more cheerful. When the Van Dans arrive, we'll be able to build cupboards and other odds and ends out of the wood piled in the attic. Margot and Mother have recovered somewhat. Yesterday, Mother felt well enough to cook split pea soup for the first time, but then she was downstairs talking and forgot all about it. The beans were scorched black and no amount of scraping could get them out of the pan. Last night, the four of us went down to the private office and listened to England on the radio. I was so scared someone might hear it that I literally begged Father to take me back upstairs. Mother understood my anxiety and went with me. Whatever we do, we're very afraid the neighbors might hear us or see us. We started off immediately the first day sewing curtains. Actually, you can hardly call them that since they're nothing but scraps of fabric varying greatly in shape, quality, and patterns, which Father and I stitched crookedly together with unskilled fingers. These works of art were tacked to the windows where they'll stay until we come out of hiding. The building on our right is the branch of the Keg Company, a firm from Zandam, and on the left is the furniture shop, though the people who work there are not on the premises after hours. Any sound we make might travel through the walls. We forbid Margot to cough at night, even though she had a bad cold and was giving her large doses of codeine. I'm looking forward to the arrival of the Van Dans, which is set for Tuesday. It will be much more fun and also not as quiet. You see, it's the silence that makes me so nervous during the evening and nights, and I'd give anything to have one of our helpers sleep here. It's really not that bad here, since we can do our own cooking and can listen to the radio in Daddy's office. Mr. Clemens and Meep and Bep Vosco, too, have helped us so much. We've already canned loads of rhubarb, strawberries, and cherries, so for the time being, I doubt we'll be bored. We also have a supply of reading materials, and we're going to buy lots of games. Of course, we can't ever look out the window or go outside, and we have to be quiet so the people downstairs can't hear us. Yesterday, we had our hands full. We had to pit two crates of cherries for Mr. Cougar to can. We're going to use the empty crates to make bookshelves. Someone's a calling me. Yours, Anne. Comments added by Anne on September 28, 1942. Not being able to go outside upsets me more than I can say, and I'm terrified our hiding place will be discovered and that will be shot. That, of course, is a family fairly dismal prospect. Sunday, July 12, 1942. They were all so nice to me a month ago because of my birthday, and yet every day I feel myself drifting further away from Mother and Margot. I worked hard today, and they praised me, only to start picking on me again five minutes later. You can easily see the difference between the way they deal with Margot and the way they deal with me. For example, Margot broke the vacuum cleaner, and because of that, we've been without light for the rest of the day. Mother said, well, Margot, it's easy to see you're not used to working, otherwise you'd have known better than to yank the plug out of the cord. Margot made some reply, and that was the end of the story. But this afternoon, when I wanted to rewrite something on Mother's shopping list because her handwriting is so hard to read, she wouldn't let me. She bawled me out again, and the whole family wound up getting involved. I don't fit in with them, and I felt that clearly in the last few weeks. They're so sentimental together, but I'd rather be sentimental on my own. They're always saying how nice it is that the four of us and that we get along so well without giving a moment's thought to the fact that I don't feel that way. Daddy's the only one who understands me now and again, though he usually sides with Mother and Margot.